Maybe we should work on lighting this time. This boring old sky. Well, I'm about to tell you something called Ultra Dynamic Sky, <coughs> which if you're new to my channel, um, you can find, uh, I think it's on Gumroad, or maybe it's in the Unreal Engine Marketplace. It's one of those two. But just search um, Ultra Dynamic Sky and you'll find it. It's my go-to. It's right here. It helps in all my lighting decisions because it helps, well, light up the area. So this is the normal without an actual sky. It, it actually looks pretty cool, but we don't want it. We want the almighty sexiness. Do you see how much this was just brought to life by adding that? And we add in some more cinematic effects like fog. And we click the sky. I mean, look at that. That's like an instant win right there. So lighting. Well, first, we're going to deal with our light source. Movable. Movable gives you better shadows, but it also takes up more performance. Your skybox should be movable as well. Static looks cool, movable, well, eventually look better. It's a little bright for my taste, so I usually turn it down to 0 0.2 to give it the same effect that was at stationary. Next, we're going to go back to light source, and we're going to use temperature. And the reason being is... We want to get that yellow sun. Emphasize on colors. You know what I mean? Brighten things up a bit. And if we go down here, we'll see this. Click both of them and then look towards your sun. We instantly got a god ray effect. Now, if you notice, there's no shadows from the clouds. Well, we can go deal with that this way. And we can intensify them. So now when the clouds travel, you can see what they affect. Because believe it or not, clouds actually do affect the way our shadows work in real life. I'll turn up the speed just a bit, and we're going to go with cloud density. Turn up cloud density too much, your lighting is completely gone. You want it about here. If we want to see the sun, this is where you want it to be. We go through like that. We wait in certain areas for clouds to come over. Which doesn't happen at this speed. We're going to go up in here and just hit refresh settings just in case. All right. So this lighting's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Got that nice fog effect going on. But what if I told you we could do better? Would you believe me? So... This is just a fast way to make uh, a scene look really good really quickly. And I don't advise always using the fringe intensity because people sometimes don't like the way that it looks. But I'm not one of those people. Give it a bit of darkness. Then we want to go to AO. Notice the effect. It gives the scene depth. And you want to have really high quality. <coughs> Just so you can get it going. And if you really want to, we can go a little crazy with the stuff, right? But three is good. Three looks grand. Because it really brings out the grass. And for optimization purposes, click all of those. Now, 
Um, global illumination, just leave it alone. We're not reflecting anything right now. But we are going to go back to right here. Our fog. And the reason being is because we want the start distance. We want the area in front of us to always be clear, but we want to know the fog is there. So, I jacked up the start distance. So no matter how close we get, we're never going to run directly into the fog, but we know the fog is there. It's more like of a, a nice little weather effect going on instead of, oh no, we're surrounded by fog, and my god, everything is just crappy looking. <coughs> now, if you want to increase your saturation, you go back here to your post-processing volume, and you go to here. Make it a little cartoony like, right? This is a, a little bit more oversaturated sh cell shader crap going on. I do like it, honestly. But you can do all sorts of effects with this. Um, like you can mess with the lights, the auto exposure, anything that you want to create what you need to do. Like, if you wanted to, you could create cell shading from here. This controls everything, including um, the lights. It's pretty cool. We can go into film. Uh, we could change the tint of the shadow, the contrast. See what that does? It's pretty cool. Yeah, I honestly do not know for the love of me how people actually create cell shading with this. Also recommend hitting G if you ever want to look at your scene without all of this in the way. Just hit G and it goes into game mode and hides everything. So we're going to take a walk around. The over exaggeration of colors. It looks great. You're walking around a nice forest, nice beautiful colors, the light is bright and red. I mean, it's it's awesome. You could choose so many different styles with the post processing volume. I'm a tree. Look at me, I'm a hippie. Have a flower. So the lighting Make it the way that you want it. Remember, your post-processing volume is your key. Unless you want to reprogram the shaders and everything else. And that requires coding experience. And I just can't show you that, sadly. So, mess around with your post-processing volume. Your, uh, your height fog. Your atmospheric fog. Until you, until you get what you need. Okay? So there we go. We got a dark, dank forest with tons of lighting and coloring. It's beautiful. I'm going to show you next video about planar reflections. We're going to import some water and stuff and try to get that going. So thank you for watching. Have a good day. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video with whoever wants to learn this kind of stuff. Lighting is definitely important when it comes to the atmosphere of the game or the design area that you're trying to make you know if you're trying to get a concept uh, done you want the best so mess with that post processing volume until your eyes bleed it will be worth it in the end see ya